Every now and then, a gas shell would come across no man's land. Of course, we were on the alert with our masks and were not caught once. However, there was one shell which came over in our vicinity and exploded rather loudly and fooled me. It was a gas shell containing tear gas, and it did not take me long to find it out. My eyes immediately began to get the effect, but I got the mask on in time so that I did not suffer much. We occupied the trenches for about two hours. At about 9.30 p.m., we were called out and dismissed. This wound up the gas course. April 6th. It was about 1 a.m. when I finished outfitting my squad and another interesting incident happened. One of the men, Peter Durkin, decided at the last minute that he would not leave camp under any circumstances. What was happening now? He was getting ready to go overseas. The captain immediately ordered him placed under arrest and warned him that he would be taken by force. It was hours of restlessness and more anxiety, and we were up practically all night. It was about 4.15 a.m. when we finally marched off and did farewell <coughs> to Yapak. The prisoner had to be carried, for he actually lay down and refused to move. We had trained and were, we were off at about 5.30 a.m. Every man carried 100 rounds of ammunition. All right, I'm trained. All right, but they did back then. All right, besides full equipment and the packs felt like pianos after carrying them a while. It was a nice, cool night, but the trip was very comfortable, it was a very uncomfortable one, because we rode in steel cars and there was not a bit of steam on. We rode right through to Long Island City, arriving there about 7.30 a.m. There we took the ferry after the 308th Regiment joined us. We were off once more. The only question on everybody's mind all this time was where do we go from here? However, we all found out when at about 11 o'clock we arrived at Pier 59 of the White Star Line and saw the steamer that was waiting to take us over. It was about 11.45 when we finally embarked and were assigned to our quarters. It certainly felt good to unsling the packs and get rid of the equipment, and we were all tired, sleepy, and hungry. We did not fail to do justice to the hard tack we had with us, and it tasted fine after that long, tiresome trip. The name of the steamer was the Justit Justitia, an English troop ship out of, of immense size. Our company was assigned to quarters in the third class, but being in charge of the squad, I chose a fairly comfortable place and began to feel right at home. I received instructions from Lieutenant Chamberlain to have my squad guard the prisoner until further instructions. <coughs> After having lunch and getting somewhat settled, I decided to take a nap and rest. The arrangements for sleeping were more or less a novelty to me. We had hammocks hanging down from the ceiling, and it took a little time to get used to these, especially on a ship. After that nap of about two and a half hours, I got up and received some cards to mail back to the folks after the safe arrival to our destination. At six o'clock, we had our first regular meal aboard ship. I then took, e took it easy until about 8.30 p.m. when I climbed into my hammock to retire. I was just about dozing when Lieutenant Chamberlain came around looking for me and informed me that the prisoner was to be placed in the guardhouse. This we did and I lost no time going back to bed. It was 1919 when he returned. The same old camp Upton we left over a year ago. Right after breakfast, the entire battalion marched over to the Y Auditorium, and after singing a number of songs, we woke up those who had not been awake and we listened to a number of lectures on jobs, insurance, compensation, re-enlistment, etc. So they're getting re, re indoctrinated back into uh, civilian life. The final moment or the final time arrived on May 31st. Uh, Oscar Oshro, okay, finally returned. At last, the most longed for and welcome day arrived, which was May 31st, 1919. About 8 o'clock, we were lined up 
and washed over to the quartermaster's. Here, after waiting about two hours, my turn came, and I received my pay and $60 bonus. We then went to the station, and upon purchasing our tickets, we were given our discharge. At 10.45, the train pulled out, and once more, Camp Upton was only a dream, and I was homeward bound for good. I arrived home at about 11.30 p.m. What a grand and glorious feeling.